Welcome to Journey Church. Our church exists to help people find God, experience freedom, discover their purpose, and make a difference. If you would like to learn more about our church, please visit us at ourjourney.tv. Good morning, church family. Pastor Vince Farrell here. Hope you had an amazing Christmas. We wanted to take this Sunday to meet online as the church body, just like we do every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. While we're gathered in the facility at 10 a.m. at 425 Millbrook Drive, there's a whole other community that watches and worships with us online. And so thank you so much for being with us. We hope that you will take just a second, drop us a comment, let us know you're here, Feel free to engage with one another as we worship together this morning. I want to take a special moment to say thank you to all of the church who has rallied together to help those in need during the tornadoes. Your services, your gifts, your financial giving has really helped those these last few weeks. I also want to ask you that as we get ready to launch in 2022, to make joining a small group a priority. Small groups are going to start meeting again in February and will meet for four months, February, March, April, and May. They meet once a month, and this is a wonderful opportunity to gather in homes, connect with other members of Journey Church to be what God has called us to be, the body of Christ. And I also want to remind us that January 30th, that's a Sunday, that is our first love day for the year. And so we're gonna gather together and meet together at the church as normal at 10 a.m. on that 30th. And then after service, we're gonna caravan and go to Family Worship Center in Cadiz where they're gonna provide us a wonderful lunch. This is a great opportunity to fellowship together. When we depart and go home, get our afternoon nap, we're gonna meet back at 6 p.m. at Journey Church to serve Joy Closet. This is an organization dedicated to helping those in the foster care system, families who have, are taken in uh, children. And so uh, we're gonna meet here. Uh, if you're serving that night, uh, meet here by 5.30. We're gonna provide dinner. We're gonna have child care, teen care, and just an awesome opportunity to be a blessing to so many families that are being a blessing. Again, thank you so much for being with us. If you have never filled out a connection card, I wanna invite you to do that. Connect with us digitally. You'll see this QR code right here, and you can use your phone to scan that QR code and fill out the desired information. It's our way of being able to connect with you even though we're not in the facility. Now, if you're using your phone to watch this service, then you can simply type this uh, address in your browser and you can connect that way. Once you do that, we'll send you a gift as our way of saying thank you for connecting with us online. Well, church family, we're going to go into worship and then hear the message that Dr. Dale Yurton is giving all of us as we continue our series, Uncluttered. And again, thank you for being here at Journey Church. Welcome home.
Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Kamar Roche. This is my wife, Laura. Uh, you've probably been seeing some of our family around, our kids. We have a few of them. Uh, we've been actually in the process of transitioning over, becoming a part of the Journey family, and we're looking forward to actually being a fully-fledged part of the family beginning the year. Um, this is just a chance for us to say hello um, and also to encourage you to participate in tithes and offering. Uh, there is so much that Journey does. We are so involved in the community and actually around the world with some of the giving we do within the kingdom. And so just wanted to encourage you to tithe. You can do that online. You can scan the QR code. You can type in the web address. Um, if you want to do things the old-fashioned way, you can actually drop it off in the bucket next time we see you here on Sunday if you're not willing to actually mail it in. Um, but again, there's so many ways to give and there's so much that we're doing. Please do join with us, partner with what the kingdom is doing here through Journey for the glory of God. And let's go ahead and pray. Father God, please bless the tithes and offerings. Bless it that we will open up our hearts to actually give as you would have us give, God. Not giving because we must, not giving because you look down on us or because you're, you're judging us. No, we're giving because you have blessed us so much. Help us to have hearts like yours, Father, that gives out of abundance, gives out of joy. And we know for sure that you're going to bless everything we offer you, God. You're going to bless it. Guide us as we choose different ways of spending this, that we may spend it in a way that glorifies you, that, that spreads your kingdom, that does your work here on earth, so that you may be glorified on earth as in heaven. Father, please guide us, bless us, and keep us not just in the ministry of tithes and offering, but in all that we do as Journey Church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome to Journey Church at Home. We will honor Christ and His church with integrity. Our lives are the message. If we live without integrity, then nothing we say matters. And now, here's Dr. Dale Yurton. Hello, I'm Dale Yurton, and welcome to Journey Church. We're speaking this month on uncluttered, and what we're talking about is how to simplify this Christmas. Now, I understand this is a very stressful time of the year, particularly for certain individuals. And then when you add the complications of problems in life to all the other activities, it can certainly get cluttered. As I said, this is not a modern phenomenon. In fact, in the book of 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter and verse 3, the apostle Paul addresses this when he says, but I fear lest somehow... As the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Notice his words, the simplicity that is in Christ. Now what I want to do in this message, I want to try to take and simplify the good news of Jesus Christ the easiest way I can. I must start with the, the Bible. The Bible. There's actually three main sections to the Bible. That is, the Old Testament, the Gospels, and the New Testament. I understand it's a very big book, and regretfully, many Christians have never read it through not one time. I have read my Bible over and over and over again. I, I lost count many, many years ago, reading and studying the Word of God. For 63 years, I have been preaching the gospel, and I've studied and studied the Word of God. It's a big book, but basically it's divided into three portions. The Old Testament, the Gospels, and the New Testament. Now, taking those three segments of the Bible and identifying the four cardinal things in the life of Christ that every Christian must believe. There is no way that you can be a New Testament Christian and not believe these four cardinal truths. The first one relates to the birth of Christ. The birth of Christ. When we talk about his birth, an excellent scripture for this is the book of Matthew, the first chapter and verse 22. Matthew writes, so all of this was done that it might be fulfilled that was spoken by the prophet saying, behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Now you note that 
Matthew writing, quoting from the prophet says, all these things were done so that this could be fulfilled. In other words, the whole message of the Old Testament is to bring us to Jesus Christ. Basically, the story of the Old Testament is God choosing a man by the name of Abraham, who became his friend. Abraham produced a nation that produced the Messiah, Jesus Christ. That's what the story of the Old Testament is all about. It is bringing up us up to Jesus Christ. Now, there is no way that you can be a New Testament Christian if you do not believe in the virgin birth. The virgin birth, it is essential to our salvation because we could not save ourselves. We could not redeem ourselves. It's like trying to pull yourself up with your own bootstraps. You can't do that, friend. That's why God had to become a man. He had to be born on planet earth and become one of us so that we could be redeemed. He couldn't do that from heaven. He had to become a man. He had to dwell among us, or as the apostle John used the word, he tabernacled. It meant he came and stayed for a short period of time, and he did. Jesus came to our world. So the first thing we must understand to be a New Testament Christian is the birth that not only relates to Christ, but it comes back to you and I as well. Jesus was born into our world so that we could be born into his world. God became a man so that man could be born of God. We must be born again. Jesus says that very clearly in the book of John. John, the third chapter in verse three, he said, you must be born again or born of heaven, born of God. You must experience that. And he explained that in verse six when he said, what is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is is spirit. So here we're talking about a spiritual new birth. To become a Christian when you are born again doesn't mean you receive a new body. No, that's in the future. That hasn't happened yet. These bodies are not redeemed as yet. No, it's our spirit that has been redeemed. Our spirit that has been born of God. And because we have been born of God, he calls us children of God, sons and daughters of God, that we have life, his eternal life, right now living within us. Now, the second word that I want to focus on in simplifying Christmas, making the gospel as simple as I can, I want to talk about death. Not only is there life, but in the world in which we live, Death is a part of our everyday living. It goes on around us continually. In fact, these bodies are in a process of dying. And that's why Jesus was born. For you and I, everyone else, we're born to live, but not Jesus. Jesus was born to die. That's exactly right. He understood his purpose. In Luke, the 23rd chapter, in verse 40, Jesus is, is being crucified. He's hanging upon the cross, and he, he cries out with a loud voice. And he says, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said thus, he breathed his last. Now you talk about control of your life. That is control. He, he breathes, in fact, he cries with a loud voice, which tells us there was still a lot of life inside of him. But then he dismisses his spirit. Why? Because as I said, Jesus was born to die. The reason he had to die is because you and I were dying. All of us were what the Bible calls dead in trespasses 
and sin. There was this nature of death that was working within us that we see continually. If you don't believe you're dying, go find a picture that's 10 years old or 20 years old, and you'll see that time is making a big change in your life. And so this is why Jesus came was to do what we could not do, die to pay the penalty for our sins. This is simplifying Christmas. He came as the Lamb of God. The Lamb to be a substitute sacrifice for you and I that everybody that believes on him would not die but have eternal life. So the first word was the word birth. The second word is the word death. And we find we must die to our sin nature, to our selfishness. You basically can boil sin down to that word, selfish, selfish. In the book of Romans, the sixth chapter in verse 11, the apostle Paul says, therefore reckon yourselves, Count yourselves, consider yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. So just as much as we need to be born of God, we have to learn a new life, a new life that is lived in Christ Jesus, that we are acting as Christ would act. We're doing what Christ would do. That, that's simplifying Christmas. Christmas is not just about a birth in a manger. It wasn't just about a birth at Bethlehem. No, it's more than that. It's about our birth, being born of God. But that leads us to, we have to learn to live for Christ. And we can only live for Christ as we die to ourselves, to our own selfishness. So this is the way that we simplify Christmas, is to understand it's not about us. When we were children, Christmas was all about the gifts around the tree. We were looking at all the packages. Now, as I've grown older and wiser, I realize life is not about the presents around the Christmas tree. No, it's about the family gathered around the Christmas tree. That's what it's about. And so we discover we must learn how to live in Christ. Now, to simplify the gospel, to make it as simple as I can, I've talked about the word birth, the word death. There's a third word I want to talk about. The third word is the word resurrection. Now, it is very interesting when we look at the three parts of the gospel, or the three parts of the Bible. The Old Testament brings us up to the birth of Christ. Then you have the gospels. The gospels detail the birth of Christ, but the emphasis was not there. The emphasis was on the death of Christ. In fact, the gospel of John, he takes 10 chapters to talk about this death and resurrection. He, he discusses it in detail. One half of his gospel is dealing with that. And when you read the gospels, you find that they focus, their primary focus on the death of Christ, which leads to the resurrection of Christ. That's what it's all about. The crucifixion without a resurrection is a tragedy. It's a failure. It, it, it cannot redeem us. And so in Acts, the first chapter, in verse 3, it's speaking of Christ, and he says that he presented himself alive after his sufferings by many infallible proofs being seen by them for 40 days. Now notice what he's doing. He is proving to them beyond a shadow of a doubt I am alive. Why? Because if he's not alive, then it all ended at a tomb. It all ended in grave clothes. But that's not the good news. No, the word gospel means good news. And the good news is, yes, he died, but he rose again. The resurrection. So for every New Testament Christian... We must believe 
in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. However, it is not just the resurrection of Christ. No, Jesus said, I'm suffering these things because I am showing you I'm going to triumph over death. And you, because I live, you will live also. So that's the third thing that I see in simplifying the gospel is resurrection, resurrection. We live a new kind of life. Remember, it's a spiritual life. We have been born again. Our spirits have received the very life of God. This is why in Romans the sixth chapter in verse four, he says that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. A new kind of living is made available to us because of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. So it didn't end in a tomb. It didn't end in grave clothes. No, thank God he rose again. And in that he lives, we live also. And so we discover that this is what the Gospels is all about, is the birth, the death, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's setting an example for you and I that we have a blessed hope in Christ Jesus. To simplify the gospel, to make it as simple as we can, to, to bring it into our lives today in New Testament Christian living. And that's where we are. We don't live in the Old Testament looking for a Messiah that will come to save the world. He has already come, my friend. He's come in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is God's answer to our dilemma, to our problem, to our sin problem, the thing that we struggle with within ourselves. But he didn't just die for our sins. He rose again. And that's what gives us hope, the hope of our own resurrection, that just as he lives, we shall live. And one of the great frustrations that we have in life is we are born again in our spirits, but our bodies are not born again. And that's why ultimately this life ends in death, because it's a physical death. Now, Jesus said, he that believes in me shall never die. But he was speaking spiritually. He was talking about the spirit man, the spirit person that has been born of God. This is why Paul says to depart. He doesn't use the word death there. He uses the word depart that my body's going to go to the grave, but I'm going somewhere else to depart and be with Christ is far better. So that's the good news. You cannot be a New Testament Christian if you do not believe in the birth, the virgin birth. You cannot be a New Testament Christian if you do not believe in the death of Christ. He didn't faint on the cross. No, he didn't revive in the tomb. Not at all. He was resurrected. So we believe in his birth. We believe in his death. We also believe in his resurrection. That's what we call the good news, the gospels of Jesus Christ. But the third section of the Bible is a section that deals with what we call the New Testament, a new covenant with God. And it's talking about people that have been born of God. They have a new spirit person living within them. They, they are alive in their spirits. They have God's nature. And of course, there's this conflict that goes on between the flesh and the spirit. We choose to follow the spirit. All of us had to deal with the flesh and battle with the flesh, but the flesh does not control us. To be a New Testament Christian, we are learning how to walk, to live in newness of life, a new kind of life. And so that's really basically what the New Testament is all about. The New Testament is teaching us how to follow 
the Christ life and to live the spirit life. And it brings me to the fourth word I want to talk about. The fourth word is the word return, return. Because that's the way the New Testament ends. It ends with Christ returning to earth again. The book of Revelations describes him coming, riding upon a white horse. It talks about how that his eyes were like flames of fire and out of his mouth went a double-edged sword, which is the word of God. He's referring to the glorified Christ. And this is the good news that this mortal one day will put on immortality. This corruptible will put on incorruption. That's the good news. So the return of Christ, four words, the birth of Christ, the death of Christ, and then the resurrection of Christ, and finally, the return of Christ. The return of Jesus Christ to planet Earth. The Apostle Paul, in the book of 1 Thessalonians, which deals, the theme of 1 Thessalonians is the return of Christ, the resurrection, the second coming of Christ. He said in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 6, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. Verse 17. What Paul is describing here is the return of Jesus Christ to planet earth. That's the good news, my friend. There, there are in the Old Testament 300 prophecies that speak about the Messiah that is going to come. 300 prophecies, and over and over again, he, he tells us he's coming. He did come. But for every time that you find that it says that he is coming the first time, there are 10 references to his return, that he will come again. And he's promising here when he comes again, the dead are going to rise first. He's talking about those that have preceded us in death. And that's the way that the word really should have been translated. When he used the word prevent, that's an old archaic word that, that literally meant to precede. We're not going to precede them. No, they're going to rise first. Then we're going to be caught up together to meet them with the Lord in the cloud, in the air. We're going to meet them. It's the return of Jesus Christ. Now, what, what is this saying to us? It, the return is saying, we have hope. Hope, a hope in Christ Jesus, a hope of a better life, a hope that the same one that came the first time is coming again, and he is coming for the fulfillment of everything that has been promised in the Gospels. And so this is the emphasis of the New Testament, that Christ is returning again. You find in the book of Titus, the second chapter in verse 13, where Paul says, looking for the blessed hope. What does he mean, the blessed hope? He's talking about the return of Jesus Christ, that Jesus is going to return and to redeem, fulfill the process of redemption, that it will not just be a spirit life, it will also be a literal, physical life, that this mortal body will put on immortality, that this body will actually be born again. Just like our spirit was born of God, now our body will be born of God. So he calls it the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about, my friend. That's what life is about. That's, that's what Christmas is about. It's very easy for us to get caught up in all the clutter, all the 
tinsel and lights, get caught up in all the Christmas songs that many times have almost nothing to do with Christmas, but everything to do with commercialism, how to sell some more goods. That, that's all the world thinks about because they live right in the present, right now. That's all that they have. But for you and I as believers, as believers that have been born again, born of God, that have God's kind of life within us, we, we are experiencing the death of the carnal nature. We are killing, crucifying the flesh so that we can live toward God. We are looking forward to the resurrection. Not just Christ's resurrection. No, our resurrection. When he will return again. That's the last word for the Christian. To be a bona fide Christian, you've got to believe more than just the virgin birth. You have to believe more than just his sacrificial death. You have to believe more than his miraculous resurrection. You must believe in his return. He's coming back, my friend. He's coming back for those that are looking for him. Those that are living their lives in anticipation. He's coming. He's coming soon. Now, it's been many years since I started following Christ. And it's been many years that I've learned how to say no to myself and yes to Jesus. It's been many years that I, I discovered that Christianity is not a struggle of me trying to be good, of me trying to do a lot of good things so that my good deeds will outbalance my bad deeds. No, that's not Christianity. Christianity is the simplicity that is in Christ, the virgin birth. He did come to our world. He was born of a virgin. He lived a sinless life and was crucified in my place. I'm the one that should have been on the cross. I'm the one that should have died. But he died for me. Oh, but the third word is resurrection. On the third day, he come out of the grave. He was resurrected. And it wasn't just for him. No, it was for you and I. For people like us that put our faith, our confidence in Christ. So, thank God for the first coming. But I live in anticipation of that second coming. He is coming again. He is risen. He is risen indeed. But he will come again. And he's coming for those that look for him. Those that are living for him. That put their faith, their confidence, their trust in Jesus Christ. That's the way that you simplify Christmas Get back to the basics. There's four essential words. Birth, death, resurrection, and return. And I challenge you, be one of those believers who have put their faith in Christ. And they live daily looking for that blessed hope. The glorious appearing of God, our great God and our Lord Jesus Christ. He is coming, friend. Let's simplify Christmas by getting back to the simplicity that is in Christ Jesus. Thank you for being a part of Journey Church at Home. If you would like more information about Journey Church, please visit us at ourjourney.tv. See you next week.